Hi guys, it is Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about ways to deal with a pathological liar. And I'm actually focusing on this, number one, because I got about a million requests to focus on this topic, but also because I think it's important because you can end up traumatized by an individual who has engaged in compulsive lying. And I also want to answer uh, some questions about this topic as well. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. For all of you who are subscribed and participating, thank you so much. And for those of you who are new, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our growing and validating community. One of the things that I love about this community is that we don't validate each other <laughs> just for the simple fact of validating each other. We actually validate the truth. And I think that that's extraordinarily important, especially when you are dealing with trauma. Um, because I think a lot of people who have PTSD, chronic PTSD, complex PTSD, um, and even individuals who are depressed and anxious, they really have a hard time believing themselves and their own perspective. Um, they also have a hard time really justifying and validating their own experience. So I think what this channel does is it kind of helps reinforce what you already know, and then it kind of helps teach you some new things as well. So I welcome you to participate. The benefits for you in today's video is that we're going to talk about pathological liars, but I'm going to give you some tips. You're going to learn a little bit about how to maneuver and navigate a pathological liar. It's really difficult to figure out what buttons not to push when you're dealing with somebody like this. You have to keep in mind the pathological liars are not just liars. They have a lot of personality pathology. They have a lot of personality traits that are pathological. And so, you know, these individuals are really problematic. So, um, it's really not just the lying that's the problem. It's a lot of other behaviors as well. So that's the benefit for you in today's video. So let's just go ahead and jump in. So on Monday, I talked about pathological lying. And, you know, you guys are so, so sweet. You said you didn't see any editing issues on Monday. I found one editing issue. Um, and I might repost that video right now. It's unlisted because um, I was trying to figure out how do I edit that little small part out at the end that kind of throws you off a little bit. Um, but I did talk about pathological lying, and um, I really did give you guys an overview. I tried to give you an overview of what it is and what it looks like, so I figured this would be part two. And uh, what I want to highlight in this video is how to deal with them, um, how to deal with these individuals. They can really, really destroy your life. They can destroy your credibility. They can destroy your confidence. They can destroy your perception of reality. Um, you know, they are really destructive. And again, like I said at the beginning of this video, it's not just the lying. There's a lot of other behaviors that pathological liars engage in and they exhibit. And so that's what makes them a problem. Now, I had someone on the channel ask me, is pathological lying the same as compulsive lying? And the answer is yes. Um, pathological and compulsive are really one and the same. They're, those terms are used interchangeably, but they mean the same thing, which is that the individual lies repetitively and it's almost like an obsession. You know, it's like the individual can't slow themselves down or stop themselves. Um, they really do struggle with being sincere and honest. Um, some pathological liars uh, lie because that's the way they've been raised and so they've been influenced by their environment. Other pathological liars do it because they've done it forever and they've become accustomed to it. And yet still other uh, pathological liars do it because, you know, they're used to doing it, they like doing it, and they get away with things. So, you know, people lie for various reasons. And if you ask me, and I might focus on this on Friday, there are different categories of liars, right? Not every pathological liar meets the same criteria as somebody else, okay? And the reason for lying may be different in, in different individuals. So how do you deal Right? How do you deal with this kind of person? Like, what do you do? Do you confront them? Do you not? Do you act like, you know, they're not telling a lie? Like, like, how do you deal with this? Should, should you confront them over email? Should you call them? What should you do? Well, based on personal and professional experience over the years, I'm going to give you some tips. So the first tip, and you could probably guess this one, the first tip that I have for you in dealing with these individuals is don't feed in. The moment you feed in, you're actually giving them your power. You're giving them your strength, right? A pathological liar really uh, does engage in power plays. And whether that's triangulating or creating a problem, I'll put a video up here for you so that you can learn a little bit more about triangulation. But pathological liars, depending on which one you're dealing with, some of them engage in triangulation. 
and it's easier for them to pull in various numbers of people, right? Sometimes two, sometimes four, sometimes a whole group, sometimes, you know, the whole workforce, the whole family, they pull in and then they, they kind of skew their perception with the power that they hold and the influence that they have and maybe some intelligence that they have and maybe some charm. And before you know it, right there you are figuring out why everybody's turned against you or why they no longer want anything to do with you so the pathological liar has the ability to really make your life um you know a living fiery place for lack of a better word so the moment you feed in you're handing that pathological liar your power don't feed in don't give them anything to go off of because you know depending on again what kind of pathological liar you're dealing with sometimes they'll run and play the victim and sometimes they'll record you and sometimes they will just remember what you said and they'll spit it back out, but in a different way or with a different tone, right? They're sneaky, some of them. So if you don't feed in, then you're not allowing them to gain anything. You know, I always tell my clients that come in and they're having personality issues with their spouses or their friends or their coworkers. I always tell my clients, you know, this is what you need to do. You need to give the the person with pathological personality traits this much to go on. The minute you give them anything, sometimes an inch, sometimes an ounce, whatever, they're going to use that against you. Um, you know, their goal, people who are pathological, um, unstable emotionally or sick or dysregulated or emotionally unstable, whatever you want to call it. You know, these kind of individuals, if they are vindictive and vicious and sneaky and calculating, you know, their goal. Um, is to harm and to destroy and to get ahead and to gain power and to give a, gain authority, you know, and to get over on you. So, you know, if that's their goal, right, they're going to do whatever it takes to get to that goal. Just like you may want to lose weight, well, you're going to do whatever you, you need to do. Stop eating, reduce your calories, whatever, take pills, take vitamins, take weight loss pills, whatever, you know, build body mass um, with, you know, weight training, whatever it may be. Your goal may be to lose weight. You're going to do whatever it takes to get there. So a pathological liar is going to do whatever, you know, they believe necessary to get what they want, which is power and control and whatever else they see fit for themselves, right? So keep that in mind. Do not feed in. The moment you feed in, you're handing them your power and your authority, okay? The next one is remove the shock value that you may display on your face or through whatever you're saying when they tell a blatant lie, okay? I think pathological liars are really, um, you know, they're really used to people gasping. Oh, I can't believe you just said that. Or, you know, they're really used to you saying things like, how dare you? Like, you know, that's not true. If you don't do that, you kind of throw them off, right? Do not respond. Do not respond. Do not respond in the ways that they are used to you responding, right? So remove the shock value from your reaction to them. I think it's okay to say something like, I just don't even know what to say at this point, right? Something like that is okay, uh, but to gasp and to like give them this whole reaction, I think they're pretty much used to it. And if you're dealing with a pathological liar who loves reactions, then you're just giving them what they want, right? You may think that you are making them feel guilty. You also may think that you're holding them accountable sometimes with your reactions. And really you're not, you know, sometimes they just drink it all up, right? They're like a gas tank and all your reactions add up for them. And that's what they want, some of them, okay? Again, depending on who you're dealing with. So remove the shock value. The next one is expect justification and denial. You know, a pathological liar is typically unstable. They usually have personality traits that are not okay. Some of them come from traumatizing and unstable childhoods. Some of them have developed negative patterns of behavior and thinking over time. Uh, they've learned how to engage in society in a very backwards kind of way. So, you know, expect the worst when you're dealing with these kind of people. Do not, um, you know, allow them to string you along or to fool you or, again, to, to, to react in a way that's going to make them feel, you know, kind of okay. They feel like they're in control. So expect them to deny what you're saying. Expect their, their, their awareness of the world to be that of denial right and expect them to justify themselves again do not respond in a shocked way because that's kind of how they operate you know that's just who they are the next is there may be times when you may have to confront them and call them out i mean i've done it in the past when i've had neighbors or friends or family who's engaged in these kind of behaviors 
I have had to, to, to confront them. And sometimes confronting them may be as simple as calling somebody over them, like a landlord or a boss or going to, the, you know, going to a board or some kind of you know, um, uh, panel that can, that can monitor, right? And that could you know, watch and, and see what's going on. So you know, sometimes you may have to confront. You may not have to do it face to face, but however you decide to handle that situation, confrontation may be in the cards for you. Um, sometimes that's the only way you're going to manage a pathological liar is to bring other people in. You're not triangulating. You're just making sure that you have a firm foundation because they're sneaky and they know how to get around you and they know how to upset you. So again, you know, you may have to confront them and it doesn't necessarily have to be face to face. Okay. And the next is my my I had a professor uh, tw uh, 10 years ago maybe maybe nine and a half years ago when I was in college and um, I was studying assessment and that's kind of like you know how do you assess mental health and how do you assess when uh, a person is sick and they need psychiatric treatment how do you assess a substance abuser right that kind of thing and I had an awesome professor and he used to say play Columbo all the time and I used to say what in the world is with this Columbo guy? Like, why are you so interested in him? And one of the reasons is because he looked incapable. Columbo looked incapable. And he also looked a little goofy and a little geeky and a little out of touch. But guess what? He was smart. He was on. He was watching. He was listening. He always had the inside scoop despite how he appeared on the outside. So sometimes that's the wisest way to deal with somebody who has pathological personality traits. Play stupid, go along, but then know you're going to go the opposite direction when it's all said and done okay so play stupid sometimes that's wisdom you know all right and the next one is don't argue because i think pathological liars engage in what's called circular reasoning they also engage in circular arguing they go around and around and back around and back around and then back around again and it just drives you insane because they're not sticking to one theory they're not sticking to one set of behaviors they're just all over the place and that's not healthy right it drags you along it pulls you along it pulls on your nerves it pulls on you know your ability to think clearly so do not argue with them and 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 do not engage in circular reasoning and, and and circular arguing with them it's just not worth it I think that's one of the ways that they wear you down they argue until they can't argue anymore and then when it's all said and done you're tired you're drained you're confused you don't know what's what and who's who and who's doing what right um so yeah that that's my final tip for you just don't engage with them don't feed in, don't argue, you know, remove the shock value, expect them to deny their behavior and justify it, right? Play stupid. And then sometimes you may have to confront and call them out. Thank you so much for being with me today, guys. In this video, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us. On Friday, I'm going to come back and talk about some personality disorders and some personality traits and mental illnesses that may involve lying, compulsive, pathological lying, because um, I want to clarify some things. So stick around for that. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.